new way of raising cash and a new you know, cleaner way of raising money. Do you see that as a future? Do you think ICOs have, have died their death to a certain extent because there is so much more regulatory hurdles for them to jump well, through? Well, uh, self-inflicted wounds. I mean, uh, <laughs> people look at what happened with some of those and, and feel like they got scammed and we're not, you know, we're not going to be interested in that. Uh, to me, one of the interesting aspects of the whole discussion is that um, there has been some talk, but no real movement towards any kind of regulation yeah. of these things. And if you're really going to be adopted widespread and it's going to have an impact on financial transactions around the world, governments theoretically should be getting nervous and getting involved. And we don't see that yet. So I'm wondering, you know, when does that come along? Joe, we were looking just last week or the week before that we are starting to see people wanting or looking at ICOs, the money that they've raised, and saying that maybe we're going to have to get some of our cash back. It was Pantera, wasn't it? One of the hedge funds that is looking yeah, at. Yeah, what was the quote? It's uh, not a thing you want to uh, tell, have to tell your investors that 25% of the projects you've raised might not have been legitimate securities and have to be uh, liquidated. What do you, uh, I mean, is there progress being made on this from your view, or is it still everyone just sort of poking in the dark, trying to get regulators to make a comment that backs up their own view? I, I think it's a little bit of both. But remember, you know, Uber went against the taxi cartel. Airbnb has fought their battles in every single city when it comes to hotel regulations. So this is more about uh, a new technology, a, a new asset that doesn't really fit as cleanly into any existing regulatory structure. Now, the SEC, the CFTC, the IRS, name your favorite three or four letter agency, they're all claiming dibs on who can regulate this the fastest, and that's created a lot of this confusion. But I don't think that, um, whether you're talking about a cryptocurrency and, and the way that funds flow through something like Bitcoin, whether you're talking about a, uh, an ICO, um, that these fit far outside of any existing regula uh, regulatory structures, it's just, I think the regulators are really trying to grapple with this and figure out how are they going to set precedent and make sure that other good actors have the ability to comply and continue to innovate. I got a, We have a question from a, uh, a viewer, and it's something that I think in 2016 and 2017, you heard this a lot, that Bitcoin was so centralized in China between both the uh, chip mi mining chip design mm -hmm. and the actual mining itself that China de facto had a significant control over the currency. Is that right? And how uh, much control could the Chinese government potentially wield on Bitcoin with the current level of uh, concentration there if they were to find it a threat? I'd say leave China aside for a second. Geopolitical risk is yeah. probably like the granddaddy of, of, of all risks uh, to this asset class still. Um, if a government wanted to, or a group of governments decided that this technology was dangerous and they wanted to try to centralize transactions, it would pretty quickly be moved mm -hmm. underground. With respect to China, I actually think that's been de-risked quite a bit in the last year, um, mostly because some of the largest Chinese mining manufacturers went to the Bitcoin Cash side of the hard fork from last November. And actually, Bitmain um, is, is rumored that they're having trouble with their IPO listing right now. Um, and I normally don't speculate on rumors, but if you just look at the, at the economics of, of that business and how far of a, a nosedive it's taken, yeah. coupled with the amount of uh, Bitcoin Cash units that they had on their balance sheet, um, it, it's, it's, it's scary time. So that's probably one of the biggest uh, mining manufacturers in China. If you assume that that has uh, siphoned off some of the uh, total Chinese impact on Bitcoin mining in particular, then it, it might be a net positive um, if you're, if, if you're you know, into yeah. shout and fried. But um, the other thing I would say is because China has been um, typically restrictive of this asset class, many of the mining companies that were uh, previously located there have moved offshore. Can, can I just follow on that real quick? Just yeah, on that real quick. One thing I think a key thing to point out in the space is, and maybe to ask you about this, is China was a significant demand factor before, but mm -hmm. now they aren't. They only supply. I was in Hong Kong back in September, and the only th word I heard everywhere was banned. Ban, ban. You have to go offshore. There's, you can't, if you're a Chinese on uh, mainland citizen, you just can't get access to Bitcoin anymore unless you're a miner, which is supply. So I find that is it's one thing that's really shifted in the space. It's pressuring prices. Yeah, we, we, we were in China in June, and I can tell you that's not true. <laughs> it's still, now, officially, yeah. Yeah, uh, right. what, what the policies <laughs> may be is, is one thing. Um, yeah. Now, that's, that's not to make light of a subject. Right. If, if yeah. the Chinese government, especially through, through WeChat, um, is, is able to censor many of the projects and right. companies and, um, and, and service providers that focus on Bitcoin, then it is a long-term drag. But um, in terms of some of the larger holders and investors, 
I don't think that's really slowed them down. If anything, you know, it's, it's moved some of their operations and holdings offshore. They still find a way. All right, this has been the great crypto debate. I want to uh, thank So great, you know, I hear this all the time that, oh, you know, Bitcoin is going to go to zero and that it is going to crash and become worthless because the miners, they can't make money and the Chinese and governments are going to outlaw it. But hopefully this last part of this interview kind of showed to you guys that uh, it's not true. Uh, if they try to regulate it, it'll just go underground. And even today, if you go to China, I'm sure you can meet plenty of Chinese that are you know, buying and trading Bitcoins without the government being able to tell them what to do. And the ban was on ICO. So like I said, it's really important when you are watching these news headlines to really understand the information because it's very easy to trick the masses. But um, only time will tell. I do feel like cryptocurrencies will be allowed in China and China is not going to let the U.S. or some other market become, you know, control control or take over the, the manufacture, the mining side. So I do see them, although being hesitant and obviously trying to protect capital from fleeing the country, um, they're not going to be able to completely ban it and it will be available. But let me know your thoughts on this and I will talk to you soon.